and welcome to our third set of videos on building a simple electronic structure program. In this video, video 3.3, we're going to be constructing the appropriate matrix which will represent our kinetic energy operator in our finite basis set. So just like any other matrix in quantum mechanics, for a given basis function with n number of basis functions, and we can represent the operator as an n by n matrix where each matrix element, we're going to call this T sub A B, will be <clears throat> the integral over all space of basis function A times the operator times basis function B. And in our contracting Gaussian basis set, uh, we can go into a little bit more detail. Uh, for each basis function, we're going to have to sum over some number of contracted ga or primitive Gaussians and multiply them by their appropriate contraction coefficients. And then we're going to take the integral over all space of a primitive Gaussian function, and for now this is just going to be an s orbital or spherically symmetric Gaussian, times the kinetic energy operator, which is minus one half del squared in atomic units, times another primitive spherically symmetric Gaussian function. Okay, so this is different from the overlap matrix because now we actually have an operator inside of our matrix element. So the first step that we need to do is to figure out how to evaluate this operator. Well, this operator is just d squared by dx squared plus d squared by dy squared plus d squared by dz squared multiplied by minus one half. And if you take the derivative of a Gaussian function, you get a, the same Gaussian function times a polynomial that is centered at the same location as the Gaussian. And so if we work through the math, which is pretty simple, uh, we can calculate or work out on pen, pencil and paper that the <clears throat> if we take the kinetic energy operator multiplying on a primitive Gaussian that is spherically symmetric, we will get the following polynomial set of Gaussians out. And so we'll get uh, a number times the exponent times the original Gaussian, and then minus polynomials in the x, y, and z direction. Uh, <clears throat> which will be of second order, so x minus a quantity squared, y minus a quantity squared, z minus az quantity squared, where ax, ay, and az are the location of the atom that this basis function is centered on. And now we can just evaluate these integrals, and we're going to split this up into two parts. First, we're going to just evaluate the integral of <clears throat> another primitive Gaussian times this, and so the integral over all space of phi sub n a times 3 alpha phi sub n b is just 3 alpha times g overlap of the two primitive Gaussian functions. And this is a function that we already wrote when we made our overlap matrix. And so we're just going to reuse this. Uh, then we get left with three sets of polynomial Gaussians. So I'm just going to pick the one in the x direction here. And we need to evaluate this term. This term is a little bit more tricky because we know when we multiply two Gaussians together, we should get a new Gaussian centered at some location in between them. Uh, but what do we do with this polynomial? <clears throat> well, the first step is we're going to apply the Gaussian product theorem for this primitive Gaussian in A times primitive Gaussian in B. We're going to get our new exponent P in the new location uh, for the center, <coughs> the center location of the new Gaussian, which we're going to call Px. And then pencil and paper, we can work this out pretty quickly, that the resulting overlap is just going to be minus 2 times the exponent times this quantity inside here, which is going to be the distance between the new Gaussian and the starting Gaussian squared, plus 1 over 2 times the new Gaussian's exponent, times the overlap of the two original functions. And that's pretty straightforward, and once we've worked that out in pencil and paper, we can implement that in our, in our program relatively easily. All right, so now that we've gone over uh, how we're going to implement this uh, program to, to build the kinetic energy matrix, let's go ahead and hop over to MATLAB and, and put it into action by writing the code. So let's go over to MATLAB. If we go look at our Hartree driver program, we call this function t equals build kinetic. So let's start working on that. t equals edit build kinetic. And make that file. Just like our build overlap, this is going to be a function that outputs a matrix basis. And the only thing that we need to give it 
are the base set of basis functions. The first thing we need to know is how many basis functions we have. So we're just going to take the size of that. And then we're going to initialize our kinetic energy matrix to be zero everywhere. Zero in basis in basis. All right. And once we've done that, we're ready to start adding numbers to the matrix element. So let's loop over all of our basis functions A. A equals 1, 2 in basis. And we'll loop over B basis. And then once we have our A and B basis functions, we need to loop over all of the individual primitive Gaussians. So for in A equal 1, 2 basis A dot N. For in B equal 1, 2 basis B dot N. Uh, and now we can start pulling out information related to those primitive Gaussians. So to make the typing easier, I'm actually just going to go G1 equal uh, basis A dot G in A and G2 equal basis B dot G in B. All right, so I'll pull out the contraction coefficients. C sub A basis A dot C in A. The B contraction coefficient equal basis B dot C in B. I made a little typo up here. Those shouldn't be square brackets. They should be curly. All right. So now we've got that. All right. So now we need to apply our Gaussian product theorem. So our new exponent p is just equal going to be the sum of the two exponents for the two different Gaussians. So g1 dot alpha plus g2 dot alpha. And then our x, y, and z coordinates of the new Gaussian that's centered between Gaussian 1 and Gaussian 2 uh, is just going to be the weighted mean of the original coordinates. So let's see here, px equals g1 dot alpha times g1 dot x naught plus g2 dot alpha times g2 dot x naught divided by p. All right, and then our x, y, and z components all look pretty much the same, so I'm going to do a little copy and paste here. And now I'm going to switch x to y to do py. And we'll do that again by switching x to z, and we'll have the x and z components of our new Gaussian. And now I can start filling in numbers. So matrix element T A comma B, T A comma B plus, this is going to be our original, the overlap of the original function just multiplied by 3 alpha, so 3 times G2 dot alpha times G overlap G1 G2. Now we need to work on the x, y, and z polynomial parts. A comma b minus 2 times g2 dot alpha squared times the quantity px minus g2 dot x naught squared plus 1 divided by 2 times p times g overlap g1 g2. And again, our x, y, and z components are going to be the same. And let's see here. Swap px to pz, px to py. And then I'm looking at this and realizing we're missing one thing, which is we need to multiply each of these by the appropriate contraction coefficients. B times CA times CB. And then that should be it. So now we finish looping over the primitives and basis function B. We finish looping over the primitives and basis function A. We loop over all Gaussian fun all basis functions B and all basis functions A. And we're good. So let's try this out with a hydrogen atom or hydrogen molecule. Let's build our list of Z. Build our atomic coordinates, AL equal uh, 0, 0, minus 1, 0, 0, 1. And I have to know what the numbers for this should be. So let's build our basis set, build the overlap matrix, and then build our kinetic energy. And let's see what T is. Ooh, something was wrong. Something was wrong. These numbers look right, but then 
Hmm. Aha. There we go. Made a little mistake there in that for loop. And then we're it. That's it. That's all there is. We've built our function to return the kinetic energy matrix. If we go back and look at our Hartree drive, our Hartree Fock driver program, uh, we notice that the next two steps are build nuclear attraction and then build the four centered electron electron repulsion integrals. Those have similar forms that we're going to need to compute. And so we're going to devote an entire set of these videos, video set four, uh, to figuring out how to deal with the Coulomb operator, which breaks the symmetry that we have in X, Y, and Z. Um, and we'll, we'll figure out how to evaluate that in the next set of videos. Hope to see you then. Bye.